lived with my grandmother for most of my life, but didn't get to know her well due to the language barrier. When she moved to India, I decided to knit her a scarf and a purse to show her my appreciation for our relationship. Unfortunately, the scarf and the purse were never sent to her due to the COVID-19 pandemic. It came to a point where I thought she would never receive these items when she fell ill with severe COVID-19 back in April of 2021. My grandmother lives in a small part, small town in the central part of India known as Indore. She is nearly 90 years old and four to five years ago, she survived a cardiac arrest. She also has a history of chronic kidney disease. Because of her many comorbidities or risk factors, doctors gave her a very poor prognosis in the hospital when she fell ill. Despite receiving numerous medications, her condition was rapidly deteriorating. She was extremely weak, she had a high fever, and her oxygen saturation or ability to breathe dropped to 82 to 84%. She received medications like remdesivir, which is an antiviral agent, and steroids, but nothing seemed to be working. Hopelessly, she discharged herself from the hospital to go home. In a last attempt to save my grandmother, a family friend was able to rush over a medication that had been used for the treatment of allergies for the last 20 years in Japan. We hoped that this medication could boost my grandmother's immune system against the virus. In summary, when a virus first attacks the body, the body mounts an immune response against the virus known as interferon lambda. You can refer to interferon lambda as the security guard of the body. It blocks the intruder or the virus at the entrance rather than trying to fight it off when it's already upstairs. By doing this, it prevents the virus from replicating in the nose and the throat, thereby preventing it from going down into the lungs to cause severe disease and spread to contacts. But in COVID-19, this security guard interferon lambda is completely suppressed. This is why the virus is able to spread so rapidly and cause such devastating disease. Therefore, we figured that if we could get a drug that can boost this immune response, we could potentially save my grandmother. Drugs that do this are called immunomodulators because they modulate the immune system. 24 hours after receiving this medication, my grandmother's oxygen saturation rose to 90% and she went on to make a full recovery. It was a miracle. Who knew that drugs that work this quickly actually existed? But the one question that continued to linger in my mind was why she did not receive this medication in the hospital. Why did she only receive it when she came home? The head of the NIH, Dr. Francis Collins, stated that medications like the one my grandmother received should be tested rigorously before given to patients. And of course, I completely agree with him. All medications should be tested before given to help the sick. But the problem is, early on in the pandemic, organizations, including the government, discontinued funding to test these types of medications, especially immunomodulators. Since many of these drugs did not receive the necessary funding to be further tested for COVID-19, they were buried. The one thing all of these drugs have in common is that they are generics. What is a generic? When a pharmaceutical company first discovers a new molecule, a new drug, they place patents on it. This prevents other companies from manufacturing and selling the drug, thereby reducing the competition and creating a monopoly for the company. The company with the rights and the patents can sell the drug for whatever price they like. After 20 years, these patents expire. This allows other companies to manufacture and sell the drug, thereby increasing the competition and driving down the prices. At this point, the drug is referred to as a generic. 
The medication that my grandmother receives costs 60 cents per tablet, which translates to around $70 for a two-month course. Compared to the extravagant cost of nearly $5,000 for a 10-day course of remdesivir, an antiviral agent, generics appear extremely affordable. But since the government puts a lot of trust in these big pharmaceutical companies, many of these more affordable generics are drowned out by the new expensive molecules. This may be extremely harmful in developing countries where there isn't access to expensive antibody treatments. So far, five million people have died from COVID-19 globally, and with many living in remote villages, this number may be an extreme underestimate. Vaccines and antiviral agents have proven essential to prevent the spread and severity of the disease. But the problem is, they take a long time to develop, they are variant specific, meaning that they are not, they are not effective against all variants, and they are not accessible to all parts of the world. In fact, by the time that the first vaccine was approved for COVID-19, nearly two million people had already died, and with new variants coming out, this number only seems to be increasing. Organizations like the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation have allocated millions of dollars into meeting the medical needs of those in developing countries in the hopes of eliminating COVID-19 and the threat of future pandemics. They set up the Coalition for Epidemic Preparedness Innovations, or CEPI, to develop and distribute vaccines all over the world, including to developing countries. They acknowledge that less than 1% of the total 9 billion vaccines manufactured during the pandemic actually made it to low-income countries. This raises the need for effective, affordable, and excessive, accessible medications that can be sent and distributed all around the world. Generics may be the answer. Because of a generic, my grandmother has lived to see the scarf and the purse that I have been waiting to send to her for so long. Generics, especially immunomodulators, may be the key to preventing viral spread and buying time for vaccine development. Perhaps with a combination of these repurposed medications and vaccinations, we may one day plant the seed to create a generic, but not basic, world without pandemics. Thank you.